Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your own molds using Amazing Mold Maker by Illumilite. I will also show you how to resin cast using Illumi Res RC3 by Illumilite. First things first, you need safety gear, in this case a respirator mask with the filters on the side, and some gloves. To make mold boxes, you can use things like a plastic cup, a Lego box, where you take a flat piece of Lego, build the, layer, the walls around it, add the clay, the model, and you can just pour the resin on. A recycled packaging container like this one. One of my favorite types of ways to make mold boxes is using ready-made baking silicone molds for baking and also for resin art. They're great because you can easily pop your molds out with ease and in this case, if you have a tray like this one, you could do multiple molds in one go. To show you how to make a two-part mold, I'm going to use this model that I sculpted. And a part from my spare bits to make it one-part mold. With a digital scale, you can calculate the amount and volume of your mold, but with a simple labeled measuring cup, you can do it. So we won't use it for this video. I like to use plastilina clay, which is highly compatible with molds. And another great way to make a mold box is using this clay itself. Just simply make a little tub, adding four sides, No cutting or gluing required, just simply smooth the edges and the corners with a tool or your fingers. Stretch out the clay upward to prevent any overflow of the mold when you pour it. I mounted the model on a base to give me an entry point when I pour the resin. This will also allow the resin to breathe and any additional air bubbles that are large can just come out and pop at the surface. Once the model was secured in place, I smoothed down and sealed all the gaps. The reason why I'm pressing down and making holes on the clay will make sense later. Here's an optional but highly recommended step, add mold release to your box. Let it fully dry before you pour the mold. I mixed up equal parts of 30 ml of both A and B into one container. When mixing, I like to start off by scraping the sides several times, working my way into the center, making sure that both the white and the red parts are properly mixed to ensure that my mold is fully cured and hard when it's dried. One of my favorite features of this particular mold is that it's low viscosity, which means it's very runny and liquidy allowing all the air bubbles to come up to the surface on their own without having to put your mold box inside a vacuum chamber. 
This mode is also food safe for anyone interested in using it for culinary. After 15 minutes, my molds were fully cured. Keep in mind that the curing time will depend on the humidity of your environment, but it's guaranteed to be cured within 30 minutes or less. I removed excess material from the resin entry point. And place the mold in a clay box. It is very important to remember to add mold release before you pour the second half as I'm doing here. Otherwise, when both halves cure, they will bond together tightly and it will be a lot more difficult to remove. Making a small cut along the lines of the two halves to give me access to be able to open the mold. I use a scissor to just gently cut that line and open the mold up from the entry point. As I reveal the inside of the mold, you can see those bumps, which were the holes I punched earlier inside the clay. This will allow both halves of the mold to interlock with one another and help prevent the resin to cure unevenly. Because I added mold release on both sides, I was able to remove both halves with ease. Before you add any resin, inspect your mold and remove any excess material that might interfere with the final result. This step will make more sense as you practice with trial and error. A quick reminder to wear your safety gear before you start mixing this stuff. When pouring the resin on a two-part mold, I first like to use a small spoon like this one or a teaspoon, the ones they use for baking, simply to add small amounts in a mixing cup and apply this amount over both halves just to ensure that the surface of the mold and the model that I'm trying to replicate doesn't have any air bubbles. This will ensure that you're not using or mixing too much material and wasting it and have just the right amount for this stage. I like to use a toothpick to move the resin around get into all those details that I want to show and get rid of the air bubbles that might be forming in the surface. For a peace of mind, don't worry about the resin curing too quick on you even though this is a cu quick cure resin. When applied in thin coats, it takes longer to dry as opposed to deep ones. I use two flat surfaces, cardboard, plastic, wood, or anything that's flat works just to hold the mold in place and secure it with a couple of rubber bands so when I pour my resin, there are no leakage on the sides. Once you're comfortable with that, mix an equal amount of quick set resin and pour it down the entry point until you see the resin rise to the surface. Add the resin to your one part mode and remove all the air bubbles as well. Once fully dried, you'll get a nice solid piece, like these. Here's the original, side by side the copy, and the details are exactly the same. Doing these steps will guarantee you good results without using a pressure pot or any special equipment. This is another piece that I sculpted. It's a shoulder armor for a model that I am working on and I resin casted two of them for both sides.
here are some dungeon fountains that I made. And if you're interested how I made the water effect or the liquid effect, I'll leave a, a link to the video in the description below. Go check that out. The following slideshows are a series of resin casts that I've done in several sizes and scales to show you that if you follow these steps, you can get really good results. One of the most ambitious projects I took on was a fully handmade chest set that I sculpted, resin casted, and painted entirely using these two products and I couldn't have done it without them. If you're interested, I will leave a link to their website on the description down below. Go and check it out. They have a full range of products that you can choose from. I am not getting sponsored for this, but I do believe they are worth your money. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next episode.